Hey guys, glad to finally see you again. One of those things where we're doing W3 online right now, so here we are doing W3 online for you. And kind of what we want to do tonight is we're going to have our story, we're going to have our world, we're going to have an activity for you to do, and we have a game for you to do. One of those wacky games that we like so much you'll get to do at home with your family or maybe your, maybe your brothers or sisters. So lots of things to cover tonight. And it's going to be in a series of videos. It's going to be in some comments. You'll find the uh, find the activity sheets we have for you. And Miss Nanette here in a few minutes is going to tell you all about the game we're going to play. So lots of things in store for you. But before we get started, I want to share with you a letter from Dr. Digalot or an email. He sent it to us today and wanted us to read it to you guys so that way you can feel and hear Dr. Digalot's heart. So let me read that to you. Excuse me while I look over here. It says, Dear W3 Gang, how, how are you guys doing? We're praying for you and love you. Isn't this a good time to be a Christian, to understand that one tru that our trust is in God? Excuse me, let me read that again. Isn't this a good time to be Christians, to understand that our trust in God and not what is happening around us? Whether we are together or apart, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Like the life of Joseph, we have ups and downs, but we're walking with God. Hey, Canteen and I dug up a great psalm to encourage you. It made Canteen and me feel really good and safe. It is Psalm 46. Give it a look, pals. Dr. Diglott and Canteen the Camel. How about that? Make sure you take some time this week and read Psalm 46. I'm sure it is encouraging for you and it'll help you feel safe knowing that God is with you and we can trust in Him, right? So, Dr. Diglott mentioned Joseph. Let's pick up where we left off the a few weeks ago when we were in W3 and we were talking about Joseph. And if you remember going back that far, that Joseph was now one of the is second in command of all of Egypt. And his brothers were sent by their dad Jacob to come into Egypt to get food because there was a famine all over the area and they had run out of food. So here they were going there to get some food. And who do they run into but their own brother Joseph? Now, they didn't recognize him, and they didn't know who he was, but Joseph recognized them. So he gave them some food, sent them back, but they told them the next time they come, they have to bring their younger brother with them, Benjamin, who they had left at home. So they get home, they have all this food, and then eventually, as typical in just about any house, they started to run out of food. Well, Jacob didn't know what to do other than to send them back to Egypt to get more food. The brothers reminded Jacob that if they go back, they had to bring Benjamin with them. That made Jacob very upset, and he refused to go. And the brothers refused to go like that, too, because they weren't going to do anything without bringing Benjamin with them, because they knew what would happen if they got there. But Jacob didn't want to send them. After a little while, Jacob finally realized this is the only way they're going to get food. So he decided to let Benjamin go as well. So off they all go to Egypt, all the brothers. And they get there, and of course they present themselves once again to Joseph and ask for food. And Joseph says, sure, but first I want you guys to eat lunch with me. So he sends them to his palace, along with one of his stewards, and they begin to prepare and hang out until Joseph arrives. Joseph comes in, and they begin to all sit down and eat together. While they're sitting down to eat together, Joseph calls over one of his stewards, and tells them, I want you to go gather up the food that they need and put it into bags, but I want you to take one of the bags and put a cup in it, a silver cup, and then I want to make sure you put that bag and give it to Benjamin. So that's exactly what happened. The food, the lunch ended, they went their separate ways, the brothers went and got the food in the bags and began to take off back home. But they barely got out of Egypt before up the steward came running and stopping them and said, Joseph wants me to stop you and search your bags because we think you guys are stealing something. They began to search through the bags and guess what they found? That silver cup sitting in Benjamin's bag. Hmm. Now the steward said, you have to come back with me because you are all in trouble. So he takes them all back and stands them before Joseph once again. Joseph looks at him and accuses him of being thieves and says, Because of that, you will now all be my slaves, and I'm going to throw you in prison, and you will be my slaves. 
because you have stolen from me. Well, the brothers were purely, clearly upset and they were going back and forth about what should they do and what happened and where did this cup come from when Joseph finally says, enough. I will only keep one of you. And that's the one whose cup or had the bag who had the cup. So that was Benjamin. He said, I will keep Benjamin here and make him my slave. Now the brothers were really upset because they knew there was no way they could go back home with that Benjamin. Their dad already said if they didn't bring him back, then guess what? He would die of sorrow. Right. So what do they do now? How are they going to handle this situation? All of a sudden, Judah stands up and goes before Joseph and said, I will take Benjamin's place. Make me your slave instead of my brother. And guess what happens from there? I'm not telling you. You have to find out next week because that's where we're going to leave off now. So I hope you enjoyed the story. Make sure you look it up. It's in, uh, it's in Genesis chapter 43 and 44, and you can read all about it. And now what I want to do is I want to get Miss Nanette over here, and she's going to introduce the game that we have for you. And that way you guys have a game that you can play with your family, your brothers and sisters, and you can have a good time with that. So glad to see you. We'll have other things posted along. We'll have a story from Miss Julie coming up in another video. We'll also have those activity sheets for you. But now here's Miss Nanette. All right, hey guys, this won't take long. You only need a couple of things for this game. You need a straw or something like a straw, and you need one for each person because we're not passing any germs right now on W3 Wacky Games. You also need like a water bottle or a Coke bottle. Um, if you don't have anything like that right now, you could get a cup, but you want it to be as narrow as possible to make the game a little more challenge, challenging. This is called the Pouty Straw Game. So you're going to take your straw and hold it. Just like this. Okay, so that's the fun part. You might want to take some videos and pictures because I'd love to see them. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your bottle or your cup or whatever on one side of the room and you're going to have your straw and you on the other side. So you're supposed to put the straw in your lips, turn around three times and race down. You've got your straw and you're going to put it in your cup or your bottle. That was easy because I was holding it and I could kind of cheat when it's sitting on the table. It's not going to be so easy. You can play it several ways. You can see who could put the most straws in in like a minute. Or you could race, like if you have enough people to do teams in your house. Get creative. Have fun. Looks pretty wacky. Have a good night.